Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white legendary and food token deck featuring Samewise Game as our commander, 2 mana 2-2 two, two legendary halfling peasant, saying whenever another non-token creature enters under our control, we get to create a food token, which could be sacrificed for 2 mana to gain 3 life, although typically we want to hang on to our food tokens because we can sacrifice 3 of them to return target historic card from our graveyard to our hand. And historic cards include artifacts, legendaries, both creatures as as well as planeswalkers are legendaries and then the saga enchantments also count so there's plenty of those throughout the deck that Samwise can return and in addition to food tokens we also have cards like golden egg with a food subtype that can also be sacrificed to enable Samwise's ability and that's the strength of this deck is being able to outgrind opposing decks that try to remove our stuff as we can keep getting those cards back over and over unless our opponent can exile them but eventually they'll run out of answers and we can try to overwhelm them so I've split up the deck into a few different categories starting with the mana acceleration and that's the first one here and one of the strengths of green white in historic brawl is that it has the highest density of one mana accelerants since we also get to play with avacyn's pilgrim which other green decks may not be able to play with so that's great so we've got a lot of early acceleration to set up our mana another card worth pointing out is inspiring statuary saying non-artifact spells we cast have improvise so now we can potentially use our food tokens to pay for the generic costs of other spells turning our food tokens into pseudo mana artifacts which is quite nice and then relic of legends also makes a lot of sense in a deck with this many legendary creatures that will now be able to tap for mana then the next category is the food and other token synergies and that's probably the most interesting section with a lot of cards that work very well alongside same wise then we've got a bit of card draw and uh, card advantage here in the next one. A lot of artifacts and enchantments that can draw us additional cards or play things off the top of our deck. We've got a bit of removal as well. Not what uh, Green White is necessarily known for, but still want some of the classics like Source to Plowshares. The Sheriff also works well with food tokens, can exile an opposing creature. And then we've got some other legendaries that can offer interaction, such as Emperor, Conquer's Death, Kogla can fight, and of course Elish Norn giving creatures minus two minus two is also a form of removal. Then we've got a few more ways here to beef up our team, usually with plus one plus one counters, so we can try to close out the game. And then we've got a bit more disruption, ways to protect our creatures or tax the opponent can also be found in this last category. So that's the rough breakdown of our deck. Now for a more detailed look, we've got a Mox Amber, which is great whenever we have a cheap commander, but especially in this deck with all these legendary creatures to enable it, it makes a lot of sense. Then we've got a lot of one-man accelerants, as we mentioned. Pilgrim, Halfling can make stuff uncounterable as well. Got Mystic and Lenor Elves, and then Gilded Goose is also great with Samwise since we can easily replenish the food token. Then we've got Innkeeper, which makes a treasure, can gain life when creatures enter, can also potentially double the trigger once we get something like uh, Elish Norn, Mother of Machines in play, so that's also why the Innkeeper's here. Then we've got Arcane Signet and Mindstone as a ramp artifacts that can immediately tap for mana, especially Mindstone's great with Samwise since we can sacrifice it to draw and then bring it back. Then we've got a Rishkar, which can put plus one counters on some of our creatures, and then all those creatures can tap for a green mana. It's also great with some of the other plus one counter synergies, but even by itself, putting a counter on Samwise and being a 3-3, we can make two extra mana on the following turn. Then the Provisioner typically wants to make treasure tokens with Landfall. It can also be very nice with any effects that double our tokens or double our Landfall triggers, and there's a few of those in the next category. Then we discussed Statuary and Relic of Legends. The Celestus can also ramp, and as it switches between day and night, gives us a discard outlet to maybe discard some of our historic cards to bring back with Samwise. The Ring Goes South can potentially ramp quite a bit if we have multiple legendaries in play, and by making a non-legendary creature into a ring bear, it also becomes legendary so we can find an additional land. And then we've got Solemn as an artifact creature that we can also return, helps us ramp when it enters and draws a card when it dies. And then Anissa, also quite nice in a two-color deck where we've got quite a few forests. And then the next section has quite a few cards to synergize with Samwise, including Mary, which can make a food token whenever a halfling we control attacks a player. 
And then Steel Seekers, one of my favorite cards alongside Samwise, says whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under our control, we get to look at the top card of our library. If it's a land, we can put it in hand after revealing. If not, we can decide to put it into our graveyard instead. So now whenever we make a food token with Sam, we can trigger the Steel Seekers ability. And then if we find a land, we gain a bit of card advantage. And if not, it's likely a historic card. And if we put it into the graveyard, then Samwise can still bring it back. So either way, we're gaining value. Then Trail of Crumbs will make a food token when it enters, and whenever we sack a food, we can pay one mana to look at the top two cards of our library, reveal a permanent from among them, and put it into our hand. And our deck has very few instants and sorceries, so it's mostly permanents to find with Trail of Crumbs. So now if we sacrifice three food to Sam's ability, we could pay up to three mana, and then reveal three permanents to the Trail of Crumbs, so that can also generate a lot of card advantage. Then a Frodo may not seem like the most synergistic card alongside Sam, but the ring bearer mechanic is actually quite nice, because if we get the ring to level 2, now whenever our ring bearer attacks, we get to draw a card and then discard a card, so that's another way of putting historic cards in the graveyard to then bring back with Samwise. We've got the Dissident, another payoff for putting artifacts in play, as now we get a plus one plus one counter every time, so that also works with our food tokens. Then a golden egg is a food itself, it draws when it enters, can easily sacrifice it to then bring back from the graveyard. Then a Rosie has great synergy with Sam, and that's no coincidence. When she enters, we create a food token, and whenever we create any token, we can put a plus one plus one counter on a creature we control other than a Rosie. Pippin is also quite nice here, two three, saying if one or more tokens would be created under our control, those tokens plus an additional food token are created instead, and we can sacrifice three foods at any point to draw a card. So it can be a great outlet if we have some food to spare. And then Mondrak is excellent if we get it going with a few of those token makers, as it can double our token production, both for food tokens as well as maybe treasure tokens from Provisioner, and then we can easily make it indestructible by sacrificing two of those tokens. Then the Gardener can make food when it enters, and if we sacrifice the food token during our turn, it can help us ramp end of turn, so it can also be quite nice. Then the Wicked Wolf can fight an opposing creature when it enters, and we can sacrifice a food at any point to put a plus one plus one counter on it, give it indestructible, and tap it. So the Wicked Wolf can also be a nice removal spell, and another outlet to maybe sacrifice our food tokens. If we maybe have a Trail of Crumbs in play, we can sack a food token to the Wicked Wolf without needing to pay the two mana to gain three life, so that can save us a bit of mana there as well. And then Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, also has great synergy with Sam, because now when a creature enters, we get to essentially make two food tokens instead of one. Also very nice with cards like Tireless Provisioner making additional treasure tokens, and we've got a bunch more ETB effects that Elish Norn can double while shutting down the opponents. And then a Gandalf the White is pretty similar to Elish Norn. While it doesn't shut down opposing ETB effects, it does still double all the effects from artifacts and legendaries entering or leaving the battlefield, and we also get to cast legendaries and artifacts at instant speed, itself a 4-5 with flash. And then the Feasting Troll King will make 3 food when it enters if we cast it from our hand, and then we can also return it from our graveyard to the battlefield during our turn by sacrificing 3 food. So instead of bringing it back to our hand with Samwise, we can just bring it straight onto the battlefield. And then a 7-6 with Vigilance and Trample can close out the game pretty quickly. Then our next section includes some of our card advantage engines, where we've got Esper Sentinel, could have also put it in the taxation category, taxing the opponent for casting non-creature spells. There's a few ways to increase its power and toughness. As an artifact creature, it also counts as historic to bring back with Sam, and it will also trigger cards like Steel Seeker and Dissident. Then we've got Tashar, saying whenever we cast a historic spell, return a creature with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So once again, having some sort of discard outlet can help enable Tashar. War of the Last Alliance lets us tutor up two different legendaries over the course of two turns and eventually gives our team a double strike. We've got Alvin Chorus letting us play creatures of the top, and we can also tap our creatures for mana. Guardian Project will let us draw a card when a creature enters if we only have one copy, and of course in Historic Brawl that's uh, usually the case. And we can even double its ability with cards like Elishnorn or Gandalf. Then we've got Captain Cisse, which can tutor up any legendary turn after turn, so it can even get our legendary lands and some of our legendary artifacts, unlike our uh, War of the Last Alliance, which only gets the legendary creatures. And the Mortal Sun will shut down all Planeswalkers, we don't have many in the deck ourselves, then gives us a 1 mana discount on everything, pumps the team and draws an extra card each turn. And the Great Henge can also be nice if we can get it down on the cheap, drawing us extra cards when creatures enter can also be doubled by these effects, and will gain us a bit of extra life while making two green mana. Then we've got Removal with Swords to Plowshares, we've got the Haywire Might as well as Loran to deal with artifacts and enchantments, Sheriff can exile opposing creatures if we sack a token when it enters, 
The Wandering Emperor can exile tapped creatures. Then Elspeth Conquers Death is a saga, so we can also get it back with Samwise. Can exile something larger, then tax the opponent, and eventually bring something back from the graveyard. Then Coglac can fight when it enters, and destroy artifacts or enchantments when it attacks. And then Elishnorn giving the opposing team a minus two, minus two, while pumping our own team by two. Can also be devastating if we play it at the right time. And then ways to increase our team's power and toughness include Anafensa, which can bolster whenever a creature enters. Got the Flowering, giving a Legendaries plus 2, plus 1, and Ward 1, and then non-Legendaries still get plus 1, plus 1. Got Adlin, which can just close out the game very quickly by making a bunch of 1-1 one, one tokens whenever our creatures attack. Has power equal to the number of creatures we control, so works well with anything that makes tokens, such as Torrents, saying whenever we cast a creature, make a 1-1 one, one green and white human soldier with training, has training itself. Then a questing beast, a great way to finish off opposing planeswalkers just by going face and has a bunch of other text. Then Vorinclex has quickly become one of my go-to cards in any green brawl deck. 6-6 six, six with Trample and Reach finds two forests when it enters, and that also includes non-basic forests. And then for 8 mana we can transform it and probably win the game after milling 10, putting some creatures back in play, distributing 7 plus 1 counters on chapter 2, and eventually finding everything. And then we've got Micaeus, the Lunark, which we can play at any point in our curve. And then we can remove plus one counters from it to add plus one counters to the team. And then in our final category, we've got Skrelf to protect some of our key creatures. Boromir can also be sacrificed to give the team indestructible until end of turn while tempting the ring. Can also prevent the opponent from casting spells for free. Got Samwise, the Stout Hearted, can maybe be flashed in while getting something back from the graveyard. We've got a Raidana, taxing the opponent's expensive non-creature spells, can also punish a Snow Land mana base. And 3 Mana Thalia can also punish greedy mana bases, where non-basics now enter tapped, as well as opposing creatures, so we can try to quickly overrun the opponent, thanks to our early mana advantage, hopefully. So I typically don't mind taking a free mulligan to look for some of those 1 mana accelerants. And then a mana base has Fabled Passage, which is quite nice alongside our Tireless Provisioner, giving us extra landfall triggers. And then lots of green-white dual lands, including uh, Scattered Groves. As a forest, we can cycle for two mana, so we can search it up with Vorinclex if we have plenty of lands already. And then a couple utility lands, such as the Shire, can also make extra food tokens. Castle Garenbrick can be helpful in casting some of our expensive green creatures. And then Boseju and Igunjo can be channeled for interaction. And Minas Tirith can also draw us extra cards and plenty of legendaries for these to enter untapped. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Witch King. Mono black sort of control. Our hand is missing some acceleration, so I'll take my free mulligan. This hand's not perfect. We have a trail to go with the same wise, but really need a bit of ramp early. Alright, this is better. And then what to get rid of? Maybe the Haywire Might, even though it is something we could loop back with the same wise, but I kind of prefer everything else. Opponent's got a Divest to take an artifact or creature. Probably takes a goose. Because the historic permanence we can return with Samwise eventually. Now I could play Goose, but it's not gonna really help ramp anything out since Shire enters tapped, so may as well take it slow. And then I can play Goose the same turn I play the Celestis now. Samwise may not be long for this world. But happy to play a grindy matchup where we get stuff back from the graveyard. Yeah, connections would have been the perfect target for Haywire Might. For now, Celestis into Goose, make two Foo tokens. And hit for two. Next turn we can flash in Gandalf, or we can deploy our project first. So we can keep up with the opponent's card advantage. Opponent simply making a treasure, so they're aware of their life total. But an invasion makes me discard two cards. A land can go, and then probably Gandalf, which we can later return. Get our project going, which our opponent's gonna have a harder time removing. Hit for two. And Tashar could also get back Rosie. Opponent now does make a shapeshifter to start pressuring the invasion, perhaps. 
And Soren can make a vampire or a draw. Likely makes a vampire. Okay, so start by playing Tashar. See what we pick up. A cheap a legendary would be ideal. Questing beast still great, but not quite what we wanted this turn. If I get back Rosie, then I'm unable to cast it, so just gonna have to pass the turn. If this transforms, our opponent gets a 2 2 flyer that can deal additional damage. Might not be the end of the world, especially if Questing Beast can attack past it. We can try and finish off Soren. My ways are not for the weak. They might still leave some creatures back to protect their planeswalker, but nope. Yeah, we'll let the uh, invasion transform. Don't want to chump with anyone. Now we could see them deploy their commander, of course, which does block Questing Beast. And there it is. 5-3 can become indestructible. And says, if a creature dealt combat damage to the opponent... So I can still try and take out Sorin, but then I'll just uh, block and make indestructible. So take our draw step. And then I can attempt to get back either Gandalf or Herosi. Yeah, I guess Gandalf's not bad here with the Guardian Project. Not the best window for a Questing Beast, I would say. So when I get back Gandalf and cast it, I could do it at instant speed, but now I'll be guaranteed to get value of Tashar. So that seems better. And then we'll get Rosie back that way. Play Gandalf. Get to draw Guardian Project a bunch of times here. And counter on maybe the Gilded Goose so that can block. The Shar's already got a target on its back. And a bunch more Guardian Project triggers, Sam triggers, which will also trigger Rosie, doubled by Gandalf. So we're gonna get to have some fun here. Got a 4-6 Gilded Goose. And uh, yeah, that's probably good enough for now. Immortal Sun will be a way to shut down Sorin. And our opponent's likely dealing with Gandalf first, but then we can simply get it back. Opponent's down to 12. Sorin can draw as well, but will cost him some life. Just finds a land. Blood for knowledge. A fair trade. Eye of Vecna, more card draw at the cost of life. Down to 10. Four mana left. And a Gix. Ponon definitely likes drawing cards at the cost of life. It's very flavorful, but not exactly what they need right now. Ponon goes for an all-out attack. Desperation time, perhaps. So we'll line up some blocks. They might have a one-mana instant to finish off one of my creatures, but that's okay. Block Witch King. And they could make it indestructible, I suppose. So maybe we don't bother blocking the Witch King and just take out the Fairy. And take the rest. Could also actually trade Tishar and Fairy and then get it back next turn. Which can trigger a bunch more synergies, but we have enough stuff in hand that it's probably not necessary. And then they'll get to draw two more. Seems fine. Opponents back up to 12, but we'll see if they decide to draw more cards. They do. Down to 10. <laughs> and our opponent explodes. Yeah, Gandalf the White was uh, awesome here. 
So quite flavorful beating the Witch King with Gandalf. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Frodo, so an equipment deck. And our hand is a little slow to get going, but eventually we can start going off with Provisioner alongside Mondrak. And then Peregrine also very good with Mondrak. So I'm down. Is this a Curse of Silence turn one? Nope. Play Samwise, and then Passage will be great with Provisioner as well. So I have to decide if I want to commit to it turn three, or if we wait. Opponent's somewhat likely to want to play an equipment next turn, so let's just go for Provisioner and hope it sticks around. And I'll offer the trade, but I doubt our opponent's going to accept. So next turn I could play Passage, followed by Mondrak, and then want to use... The uh, treasure token we get from Passage initially to play Mondrak and then fetch, so we get two treasure tokens with uh, a land entering. And that'll assist this fine. So, no attacks for now. Yeah, I think we stick to the plan. Could also wait on Passage until next turn, so I get even more value of Mondrak, uh, which is certainly reasonable. But I kind of want to keep up the protection on Mondrak potentially, and this is a good way to do that. And fetch for a forest. And make two more treasure. So I have enough mana to play Peregrine, but I think we want to pass it back for now, keep up Mondrak's ability. And then we can have some fun with Pippin drawing extra cards and Mondrag doubling the food tokens. Gardner can then also ramp us. And War of the Last Alliance could get some of our finishers, like Elishnorn, which can also double our triggers. So as long as we don't see removal, we're happy. A Rune of Sustenance is fine. Opponent's gonna equip the Nettle Cyst. 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, I could block with Mondrak, make it indestructible. That's certainly reasonable. So it costs us 4 life to prevent 5, but... Now Mondrak's indestructible. Swords isn't bad. But uh, let's see here. Play Pippin. Play the Shire. I'm making more treasure tokens. Then we can play the Gardener if we'd like. Or we can go straight to the War of the Last Alliance. But we can wait for it. Play Gardener. Make a ton more food tokens. And then now we can start drawing. Vorinclex isn't bad. Okay, that's probably good enough for now. Get an attack in for five. And I'll keep up swords. Could pull the trigger now, could wait. But now we get to trigger landfall yet again. So 11 food tokens, 4 treasure. Next turn, get Mother of Machines and play it, perhaps. Okay, once and future gives protection from black and from blue. Doesn't get past Mondrak necessarily. And Sting, also quite fitting. So, can still block with Mondrak just fine. And we could source to plowshares, but. For now, I'm happy if my opponent has a bit of fun with their equipment. I'm afraid they might concede if I swords. And I'm having too much fun with Mondrak here. It 
Say core turret. Okay. So, step one, play war. Get Mother of Machines, play it. And then we want to play a land afterwards. So we double the landfall trigger as well. Definitely making treasure. Can play Relic of Legends, which also makes quite a bit of mana here. Can draw with Pippin's ability, which will also enable the Gardener. Feasting Troll King, I would love to discard somehow and then bring back. The food tokens moving around makes it difficult to click on three of them, but uh, we figured it out. Can keep going. Alright, let's see here. Do we want to play Vorinclex perhaps? Sure. Can get the cycling forests and a canopy vista. And then I can discard to hand size here. I guess we get to trigger Vorinclex twice with uh, Elishnorn. So yeah, this is a perfect discard outlet to put the Troll King in the graveyard. Uh, can maybe draw a couple more cards. Alright, I guess that's good enough for now. Sting triggers, no attacks. End of turn, ramp with a Gardener, which will also make more treasure. And then discard Troll King on a Fenza, a land or two. Okay. So we've got 17 food tokens, which represents at least uh, five or six more cards. Shadow Spear can remove indestructible. Okay. Could be effective against Mondrak. And of course also gives Trample. So it might be time to fire off the Swords to Plowshares. Sword of Fire and Ice as well. So now that our opponent's fully tapped out, I'm afraid we have to exile Frodo. And uh, can tap Vorinclex in the process. So Frodo's dealt with. Opponent still has all their equipment, but yeah, as I feared, this is enough for a concession. Next turn we would get to search up another creature with our saga and likely just end the game. Sweet, I'll do the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Vivian on the hunt. Kind of a toolbox planeswalker. Our hands, not very good without green mana. Okay, this uh, could be a little bit better. Got Mindstone for Acceleration, can get a Last Alliance going, which can maybe search up some more exciting legendaries. Thalia, not the best against a monocolor deck since her opponent's not going to have a ton of non-basics. Opponent's got a turn one Shadow Spear. And then we got to start thinking about which legendaries we want to search up. Maybe initially a way to generate more mana. And then we can get some payoff card. Haywire Might could be an answer to Shadow Spear at some point. Could also get Captain Cisse, which can repeatedly search up legendaries. A Loran could blow up Shadow Spear, but I'm not too concerned about it. Um, Peregrine Tux is also very good in this deck if we start making a bunch of food. So we certainly have options. If I had more creatures in play, I would maybe be in favor of Rishkar to generate more mana. 
Uh, right now, I'm kind of leaning Captain Cisse. Um, Eleanor could also be good alongside Sam, but I wouldn't be able to double spell them next turn. So, tough call. Yeah, let's go grab Captain Cisse. Which we can play next turn alongside maybe a Haywire Might. And then if they don't have removal for it, it can keep tutoring up more stuff, including our legendary lands. Cultivator, okay. Finds a land. And a Jukai Visionary can help them ramp. Alright, so against a potential Vivian, what's best? Questing Beasts could be effective, although our opponent can just decide to make some 4-4 tokens in that case. So maybe we do want to go over the top with maybe Rosie making a bunch of plus one counters. Could double with Mondrak, or could eventually get an Elish Norn, which will certainly stabilize the board nicely. Yeah, you know what, let's get Elish Norn to have it in our back pocket. And then for now, Cissé, Shire enters untapped, play Might. Not gonna fully leverage the double strike mode, but that's okay. If they don't make a Rhino, I can still tutor up a Questing Beast. But opponent has a Stomper for now, maybe missing that sixth land for Vivian. Since we know they didn't have a land in hand for Cultivator. Take two. Pilgrim the draw. Okay, can make uh, Haywire Might or Ring Bear, but I don't think it's going to be relevant. Opponent's going to end up using the Visionary, so no point in attacking. Now we can go Project into Pilgrim, but since we have CC as our card draw engine, don't really need to get Project in play. So I might prefer going Samwise into Thalia, into Pilgrim, make a bunch of food, while also making more mana. Could also activate Captain CC to get Rishkar, which can also help us generate more mana to then set up Elishnorn next turn. Can target himself and Samwise. Play Pilgrim. Might could have also answered the Visionary since it's an enchantment, but then they would have just used it in response. So we will see our opponent play Vivian. Can sacrifice maybe Cultivator to get a 5 drop. Could get an Acidic Slime. That's a new addition at 5. Maybe a Thrak Tusk. There's definitely some good 5 drops. But yeah, next turn we could cast Elish Norn. Take four. I like it. Opponent doesn't need to get a five drop. And it's gonna be a Defiler of Vigor instead. That can certainly grow their team out of the Elish Norn range. Okay. So is there anything else I want to get with Captain Cisse? Anything that's better than casting an Elish Norn. Great Henge, eventually. Right now it's a bit pricey. Immortal Sun will shut down Vivian, so that's certainly an option. Which may be better than just deploying Elish Norn. Let's see, this triggers on cast, so we can stop it with Mother of Machines. Yeah, pretty interesting position. I'm torn between Kogla and Immortal Sun. Kogla could just trade for Defiler of Vigor, which may be good enough. I guess I could also pick up a human to make it indestructible, which may be worth it. Alright, fine, let's just answer Defiler, which is kind of scary. And then play Kogla. And then I can uh, activate the ability. So we'll make some mana. Pick up a human. The 
Defiler down. And I can replay Pilgrim. Okay. And then next turn, maybe go for Elishnorn. Great Henge also now pretty cheap to play with a 7-powered Kogla. Opponent can sack Solemn to Vivian. Get another 5-drop. Well, and the Ronas to double their creature's power and toughness. Might be time to jump with Haywire Might. Scavenging Ooze for Graveyard Hate, so that's pretty effective against Samwise. Are there any creatures in Graveyard? Just in the opponents. So Ooze is going to survive the minus 2 from Elishnorn. Don't really want to take 10. Now we've got Kogla to deal with artifacts and enchantments now. So what we could do is play Elishnorn. If our opponent saves Ooze, then they won't be able to activate the Visionary, so we can then blow it up with Kogla. Mox Amber also would have been nice. So how does this turn look like? How much mana are we working with? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 at the very least. Captain Cissé could also get a Legendary Land, but probably gets either Great Henge, which we can play essentially for free, or we could get Immortal Sun, which also shuts down Vivian. But yeah, I imagine getting Great Henge, then playing Elishnorn, then our opponent has to respond with Scavenging Ooze, and then Kogla deals with Visionary, and then we should be in pretty good shape. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Shelob, black, green, and uh, yeah, our hand seems keepable. Can expect quite a bit of removal from the opponent's deck, but that's also where Samwise can be quite effective, getting stuff back from the graveyard. Even have the other Samwise in hand. Spare Dagger, good alongside Death Touch creatures, since it can deal one Death Touch damage. For now, play Signets. And then we'll see what we want to deploy next turn. It's a little awkward since we would prefer to play these cards with Samwise in play. But I guess that works, and then if they take it out, the Stouthearted can get it back. Sure. And Green Widow, that's okay. So a bit of spider tribal here. You get to make a food and make a ring bearer. Let's make it uh, the stout hearted. So we could ramp for two with the ring goes south or we can keep deploying more creatures. Kind of like playing Mondrak since uh, we'll be able to make double the food right away. Although I guess I can make it indestructible since I don't have the spare mana with this entering tapped. Which is maybe the better play. So let's play the Gardener then. And then next turn hope to play Mondrak. Hit for two. And now our Ringo South is also a bit more effective with more legendaries in play. Vivian can take something out. There's no sideboard in Historic Brawl, so the minus five is not quite as effective. But of course, still very good with a plus one and minus three. It's gonna make a huge Green Widow. Okay, so I'm still liking Mondrak here. And then next turn we can start tutoring for stuff. This can attack Vivian. And can easily make Mondrak indestructible by sacking some food tokens. More counters onto the Green Widow. Now an 8 7. And Broodmother is next, another spider. So, I guess now that our opponent's tapped out, we'll make Mondrak indestructible so we don't have to pay as much life later.
and a Feasting Troll King. Okay, so how much mana are we working with? Six total. So, yeah, maybe you ramp with the Ringo South, or I could just uh, War of Last Alliance, get a Legendary, play it, and trigger more of our synergies. So I want to get a two mana Legend. That can still be impactful here. If I get Frodo Baggins, we can level up our ring. That turns into a discard outlet, so that's kind of neat. Yeah, let's get Frodo. And then now attack Vivian, can discard the Troll King, which we can bring back right away. Since we have plenty of food. I'm a survivor. And get to find a basic. Not bad. Could be time for Shilop, at least Vivian won't be able to mine us alongside it. So her opponent's equips the Green Widow. Which could attempt to take out Samwise. More counters on the Broodmother. And Abandoned Mire channeled. Doesn't get anything back. Alright, so a bit of a weird play. Now what do we want to get? The 7 mana Elish Norn is looking good. Although can expect the opponent to hold up some spot removal. So if that's the case, what do we like? Could just go for Captain Cisse as a way to get our other legendaries. We have Mother of Machines in hand, so anything with a powerful ETB effect could also be nice. So maybe actually go for uh, Rosie to make a bunch of food. Or uh, Pippin could also draw some more cards. So quite a few options. Let's get Pippin. And then play Elishnorn. Into Peregrine Took. So the Spare Dagger is only when they attack. So still happy with my current Ring Bear, or I can switch it to something with enough power to finish off Vivian. So maybe Mondrak. So we've got a level 4 Ring Bear. Play Pippin. So now everything triggers twice. Move to attackers. We've got uh, 16 food tokens thanks to Mondrak. Don't think anything else is attacking. We get to draw and discard. And stature we can also bring back thanks to Samwise. Opponent activates the Broodmother. And Vivian down. So I might want to draw a card here so we also trigger the Gardener. Could get back Statuary, but this is good enough for now. Find another land. Okay. Next turn our team gains double strike. Opponent runs out Shelob. Spiders have death touch. And if uh, our creatures die in the process, our opponent can copy them. And then now I guess they can use the uh, dagger to kill one of my creatures. And Elish Norn makes sense. So then it will kind of cancel out my own Elish Norn, stop any ETB effects. But uh, maybe that doesn't matter if we can just win the game next turn with double strike. No blocks. And then uh, let's see if this is your end step only, then there's no point in getting anything back right now. Great Henge isn't bad. 
although the uh, mother of machines also stops us from drawing with it. Any change in ring bearer? No, still happy with Mondrak. Can play Henge. Play Mary, which will still help us make more food. And then the ring goes south. Gets a ton of lands in play here. Okay. And go ahead and attack. And everyone gets in there. Our opponent's got two blockers, but uh, Troll King will also trample for a bit. So I think we have just enough here if there's no additional interaction. Okay, any responses? I don't think so. That's first strike damage, and then we still have regular damage. And then the ring bear also applies more damage. Sweet. And our opponent explodes. We've got 17 foo tokens ready to bring our stuff back. But yeah, that mother of machine token could be quite scary indeed. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kalia, Zenith Seeker, which is going to seek angels, demons, and dragons. Our hand will need some acceleration, so this is a mulligan. This is better, although not perfect. Can actually play Mystic turn one. Can play it after playing Arcane Signet next turn. And then we're on our way. Sign in blood to draw two cards. That's fine. So next turn we're looking at Samwise into Innkeeper, perhaps. Start making food, and then Gardener, also quite nice alongside Trail of Crumbs. This will help us ramp, this will find more action. And Emperor can be an answer to a larger demon or dragon. Can hang on to Fabled Passage in case we find some landfall synergies. And uh, yeah, Samwise into Innkeeper, prefer making the extra food over gaining the extra life. Could still play Trail of Crumbs, although let's just wait and attack for one. Ideally we find a way to sacrifice food tokens without needing to actually pay the two mana to gain three. So if we have something in the graveyard to return with the Samwise that would work. Our opponent with a Metropolis Reformer, a new Aftermath card, 2-3 Flying Vigilance, and we'll gain them life if we damage it. That's fine. So, time for a Gardener, and then I guess we could just uh, sacrifice a food to gain three and ramp, or we can just start using Trail of Crumbs, which is preferable. But right now, I don't have the mana to pay the one for Trail of Crumbs if we also play Gardener, so probably better to get my mana established. Because if I play a trail, then we're not uh, going to be able to get anything back. So we'll just gain three and pass it back, and then the gardener can find the land. Okay. Could have also considered attacking with Samwise if they block Flash and Emperor, put a plus one counter on it. But I think we need to save this for the minus two to take care of a larger creature. And if we play it now, then our opponent can sort of play around it. Vigilance also a good way of beating the minus two from Emperor. Okay, time for trail. And then now I can sacrifice a food token and pay the one for trail to try and uh, find some more action here. Who vanish into eternity to exile our Trail of Crumbs. Okay, I guess we can sack another food token in response and pay the one. Finding just an Iganjo, not the uh, most exciting. 
And then I guess we can still pay the one. So I regret not playing my land first, but was waiting for maybe some landfall synergy. Okay, War of the Last Alliance is great. So that can find more goodies. And then now I'm good to attack, since we can channel Igancho to take out Reformer. Opponent takes it. Okay. And we get to ramp. So what to get with the War of Last Alliance? Captain Cisse comes to mind as another way to get more action. Could try and get an answer to these artifacts. Channel a Ganjo to deal with the 2-3. Does gain them some life. And Tashar also not getting anything back right now. So we'll play the war. And Loran could blow up Chromatic Lantern, set them back on mana. That's reasonable. And then next turn we can get something more expensive. Make more food. Get in there. And then I suppose I could uh, sack a food token once again just to get another land. Seems worth it. Alright, let's see what our opponent comes up with. Just has to pass it back. So they might have a bunch of expensive demons and dragons in hand that are unable to cast. Alright, so what finisher do we want to get? Maybe Elishnorn, pump the team, and try and get in there. If they take it out, so be it, we'll eventually get it back. We'll give that a shot. Alright, opponent does have an anguish in making, which exiles Elishnorn, so no getting it back with Samwise, unfortunately. Alright, fair enough. Still costs him a bunch of life. Can I play Pilgrim, or we can play Emperor, which maybe applies a bit more pressure now. Next turn, our team gains double strike. So even if they have a sweeper, I can play Emperor, make a token end of turn. And then with a double strike we should be able to finish them off after putting a plus one counter on the token. A Loran could also draw. Expel also exiles Samwise. Pun really likes exiling, which is convenient in this matchup. But uh, yeah, opponent's still pretty dead here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kenrith, the Returned King. Five color, good stuff. Always going to be a tough matchup. Our hand's also not particularly inspired. This would have been good with more cheap creatures to go with the Elven Chorus, as is. It still feels slow, but uh, yeah, Conqueror's Death could be one of our better cards in the matchup, so we'll give it a shot. Mindstone isn't bad, so we could play turn 3 Chorus, probably better than an early Samwise. Still need a second white source for Conqueror's Death, but with Chorus, our creatures can also fix our colors. Okay, so still only one white source. If I play Samwise Gamgee, then next turn I could play Chorus and play the Stout Hearted. Yeah, maybe playing the creatures first will leverage our Chorus a bit better. And if they have a counter spell up, I don't want this getting countered. Might be a growth spiral. Nope. Opponent takes their draw step. Three callers in play already. All basic. So, play chorus. And then I'll still be able to play Samwise. Okay. So I'll just pass it back. Opponent with a Lenor Elves at long last. That resolves, make a food token. And 
and a source to plowshares on top. So I can redraw with a golden egg, see if there's a creature next, or I can just deploy a feasting troll king, which applies a good bit of pressure here. Can attack for two, maybe keep the golden egg to help us uh, get rid of a non-creature card of the top. Is our opponent still missing white mana for Kenrith? Although they could cast a reverse rebuke here for all we know. Get to untap. Signet on top, so let's draw with the egg and see what's next. Celestus, yeah, a lot of artifacts. Can redraw with Mindstone. And then Samwise can easily get it back since it's an artifact which counts as a historic permanent. Alright, there we go, Frodo. Play that. Troll King can attack. And then I can still play Celestus, keep up swords. Could switch Troll King to a Ring Bearer so it can draw and discard if I attack. And a Trail of Crumbs is next. So Ditch Signets. And that resolves. Alright, play Farmland and pass. And then in the event of some sort of sweeper like River's Rebuke, I can at least sacrifice my food tokens to get back some of my Artifacts from the graveyard. It's going to be a Jingataxius. Does counter instants like swords, but does not counter Conqueror's Death. So that's fine. Take our draw. Immortal Sun on top. So let's deal with Jingataxius first. That's exiled. So let's just attack with Troll King, so I get to draw into the Immortal Sun. Discard Immortal Sun, since I can get it back with my food tokens. Halfling I could cast, but let's make sure we cast our Immortal Sun first. Can also sack the Golden Egg, so that goes to the Graveyard. Play Mortal Sun, and then I don't think we have any mana left. Not a bad turn. Opponent finally with an Assassin's Trophy on the Troll King. That's acceptable. It's not going to be gone for long. And we get to ramp in the meantime. Get a plane so we can swords if needed. The next turn our opponent's also tanked by Conqueror's Death for non-creature spells. So our opponent's going to run out a Sika. Yeah, seems like a fine target for swords. So we get to untap. Draw two with Immortal Sun. Solemn on top, which we can cast for free if we'd like. And Troll King we can return just by sacking some food tokens. Do I want to search? I guess I do, since I won't be able to cast War for free. Pilgrim we can cast. Boring clicks. Not bad. So let's run that out. Get Vista and Scatter Groves. And who wants to be our ring bearer? Let's just make it uh, Frodo. Alright. So if I play Trail... Then I could, when bringing back Troll King, activate Trail a bunch of times. But probably just want to attack my opponent here, if we're being honest. Instead of tapping my creatures for mana. The Shar on top. Opponent falls to two. So we'll bring back Troll King, which is not legendary, so it wouldn't have uh, leveled up our ring to deal lethal with uh, our ring bear. And I guess we'll play a trail as well. 
Okay. Got a lot of permanence in play. Just gotta hope nothing goes wrong. But with the taxation effect from Conqueror's Death, they won't even be able to necessarily cast a River's Rebuke. Alright, so her opponent may not have cast a ton of spells at that game, but we still get to see the power of Elven Chorus, casting a lot of creatures off the top of the deck, and then making a lot of mana as well to help empty your hand. And the Ring Bearer mechanic also surprisingly effective in this strategy, giving you a discard outlet to potentially put some legendaries in the graveyard, and then it also kind of turns into a sacrifice outlet for your food tokens to enable cards like Trail of Crumbs without having to individually sacrifice food tokens. So we actually prefer facing the more interactive decks in the meta, since that way we're more likely to get stuff back from the graveyard with Samwise, which in turn can enable some of our other synergies as well. So the deck can sometimes feel a bit matchup dependent. If you don't mulligan for those explosive openers, the deck can feel a bit sluggish, since it sometimes takes multiple pieces to come together. But once they do, we can definitely see those synergies flourish, like we showcased in the games today. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.